Hello everybody and welcome to the episode 3 of Fast Expand. Today we have the usual hosts, me and Chris EvilGuy13 game with our brand new camera and splashboard. Say hello Chris. Hello, I'm Chris now with full visual. Now everybody knows what we look like. Ah. <laughs> so how are Done. you doing today now Chris? I have been fine. It's been exciting. I've been talking a lot with DSL about WCS can't reveal anything in this way. I said, like, oh, gosh, okay. I could do better than It's like, oh, yes, I work for this posh company. Can't reveal anything, of course. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, um, it seems like your upload speed cannot have a camera and music, so you are a little bit blurry. Uh, unfortunately. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there but... we go. No, no one can deal with me. Anyway, we do have a very, very special guest on today. Today, we do have Infuse Moomin. Say hello, Moomin. Hello. Hello. Awesome. Um, as you might have guessed, she is a female StarCraft 2 player. Um, and we've just got, she won the show match for her team, Infuse, last week. So I uh, thought we'd get her on and ask her a few questions. So first of all, how are you feeling today? Um, pretty good. I just played my placement match and beat someone who went DT, so I'm happy. Oh, nice. What, a DT rush? Yeah. <laughs> what prison. Uh, uh, that old uh, nice cheese. So uh, I'm guessing you got placed back in Masters? Yeah. Oh, uh, congratulations. Grandmasters this season, maybe? Um, hopefully. So I can be. <laughs> oh, you don't need luck. You're all right. <laughs> so, um, first of all, what's it like being a female competitive StarCraft II player? Because there's uh, not really many of you. <laughs> um, I don't know. It gives you a lot more attention. I guess that comes with good and bad attention. Mm -hmm. But I try and just focus on my game, and I want my, my play to be the most important thing. That's... Very, very good. That's probably about the best answer you could have give. Um, <laughs> Chris, would you like to kind of ask a few follow-up questions? And... Yeah, absolutely. Um, just back to you, like you said, good and bad. What is like the most sexist thing you have heard? From... <laughs> yeah, Go, um, get right in there. <laughs> it's usually silly jokes like, uh, is your computer in the kitchen? Or stuff, stuff like that. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, um, just for people who don't know, I know most people do, but a couple might not. Where did you get your name from? Um, the TV show, which is it's a Finnish TV show about crazy hippos. Those creepy uh, little hippo things? Yeah. Oh my know, god, they gave me nightmares as a kid. <laughs> it was it's quite a messed up kid show, but I really liked it. So. <laughs> so you named yourself after something terrifying and ominous, basically? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Um, you are. You've just been, recently been picked up by Team Infused. How, how are they treating you over there? Um, really good. I really like Team Infused. They're all really helpful, really friendly. Who do you get on with the best over there? Um, I don't know. I practice with Orc a lot, but he he trolls me. He's, like, <laughs> he's trolling me right now in Battle.net even. Oh, nice. So um, that's a lovely distraction. Yeah, Stanan's pretty cool. I've been talking to him, and Snow's been helping me. So. They were, they were really nice. Okay, that's good. Um, how has it helped you with like the practice partners or you know the advice that a professional team can give you? Is that kind of how? What would you say has helped the most with being um, picked up by Team Infused? Definitely, just having like really knowledgeable people to talk to. If I have a problem, like I can just easily ask some really really good people, and it really helps because it's kind of hard to find that anyway. way. Oh yeah, I guess so. I mean, uh, obviously you've got Fargo on the team. He's a very solid Terran. Uh, you've obviously got Orc who plays all three races very, very solidly as well. So I'm guessing just having a wealth of knowledge and you know friends to kind of talk with is really, really good. Yeah. Um, so, what advice would you give to other female gamers then? Um, I don't know. Just practice hard play there's so many cups around nowadays like daily cups and you should just try and enter as many as possible and hope you get noticed yeah awesome um i see you're dying to ask a question there chris <laughs> i am very much so um you did qualify for the wcs which is really when some would say you really broke out into the uk mm -hmm. scene are you looking forward to the wcs and who would you say would be your biggest competitor there who are you most looking forward to play against um, I'm really looking forward to it. I want to. I'm not sure. I don't know who I've got first round yet, but second round I'll have Sicto if I win, and he's really, really good. He's did really well in the last TSL qualifier. 
beating Demarga, so hopefully I can play him in perhaps good games. Awesome. Uh, would you like to go against like bling the Muslim kind of test your metal yeah, against them? Or? That that would be really cool actually. I'd really like to play the Muslim. Oh, because most people would say like they want to avoid them <laughs> no, sort of players. No, that would be a good idea. I think I think I might just cheese him. Just for <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here first, guys. <laughs> um, just have to hope the Muslim doesn't watch this show. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's very unlikely. But <laughs> You never know, do you? Exactly. Um, so, where did you kind of begin your gaming career? Um, um, a good question. Yeah. I don't know. I'd... Starcraft Two is probably my first RTS. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to play a lot of Guild Wars and stuff like that, and more MMOs. Any? But... What's the first kind of competitive game? Would it be Starcraft Two, or did you play? Um, definitely War? Starcraft Two. Okay. So I haven't even asked like how old you are or anything like that. That's <laughs> quite a good question isn't it uh, so yeah would you like to give us a bit of background information on yourself as well like age um, where you're from stuff like that I live in Cornwall which is quite nice uh -huh. I'm 20 I'm currently going to college doing IT okay and uh, I don't know what else to say <laughs> that's good enough for me um, so do, do your non-Starcraft friends know what you do and if so how do they kind of react uh, yeah um, they're all quite surprised when I told them <laughs> trip to London I don't think they really realized how like how much I practice at Starcraft and stuff and I've managed to get a couple into it but they're not very good <laughs> well you know you've you're a pretty solid player you could probably coach them yeah, I try but it's quite it's quite frustrating coaching your friends oh yeah I can imagine like uh, basically they want to know a build of how to get out of uh, bronze yeah. I guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um if you weren't kind of playing, st I, w I want to say playing professionally because you are in a professional team. Um, if you weren't kind of playing professionally, what would you be doing? Like, is there any other career that you'd be doing right now at 20 or would you just kind of be studying? No, I'd probably still be studying. And just playing games part time? Yeah, I think it, even though like I've always loved games and I always play games even if I'm not on a team or whatever. So. Okay, and uh, if you weren't playing Terran, what race would you play and why? Um, I actually started off as Zerk. All right. I got, I got really frustrated with just defending all ins every game. So I switched to Terran because I looked more fun. But I think if I could pick a race, I'd pick Protoss. Okay. It's always like that, isn't it? The race you don't play is the one you like the most. Oh, it is. Oh, it's the most <laughs> OP race. Whatever race you don't play <laughs> is OP. <laughs> um, what other questions would there be? Chris, have you got any questions stored in that lovely big brain of yours? Um, no, not really. <laughs> Actually, you caught me off guard a bit there. You were doing such a great job. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose you could ask some more questions about WCS. Like, do you know what your hotel arrangement is? Because the players that are anything, you, I know you probably can't reveal some stuff because I know ESL is keeping a lot of stuff the secret the secret they're keeping it apparently mm -hmm. but i'm guessing they're rooming players together so would they room you separate or are you like okay with going in with the guys uh i haven't sorted out completely yet because i wasn't sure if they were telling people who they're rooming with but i found out about a week ago that you get to choose so i haven't got anything things 100 percent set yet who are you going to choose and i'm talking about <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Put you on the spot. The Muslim, now. obviously. Uh, I suppose your teammate uh, Johnny Rico is going. Um, yeah, him is going. Orcs going. Zikto's going. There's quite a few few people going actually. Yeah, well, these are a massive team and uh, probably one of the best in the UK, I'd say. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, is there anything you'd like to talk about? Um. Well, Johnny's doing pretty well in the TSL qualifier at the moment. So. Uh, how's he doing? Go watch him. He's. I don't know if he's finished his games against Yatta or not at the moment. Yeah, he just did. He's in the quarterfinals. Oh, well done so to him then. Everyone should go watch Johnny and cheer him on. <laughs> but not now. No, not now. And he's also <laughs> attending DreamHack, isn't he? Yeah, we've got quite a few people going to DreamHack this weekend, so people should cheer Infused. British Hope. I don't blame him. How come you're not going then? <laughs> oh, I joined a bit late. Ah, okay. So uh, what tournaments do you have coming up? Any... Any lands, or are you just kind of um, sticking around the online scene right now? Should we go to the Ice Forty Six. 
Okay. Which will be really interesting. I really can't wait for that. That's August bank holiday weekend? Something like that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, it's been absolutely wonderful having you on, Moomin. Um, I do have one, I do oh, have one more on quick question before we head off. Um, Johnny Rico is actually when I am at I-45. He seemed a bit shy. Is he like that in person or over call in team chat, uh, etc.? Yeah, he is quite shy, actually. We haven't talked that much. Okay, fair do. Just was just wondering on that one. I was just curious whether it was just like the whole I-45 thing or whether it was just him as a person, but that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, actually, one more question then, since you kind of brought that up. Any insider <laughs> secrets about any of your teammates that you'd love to share? Um, insider secrets... Like... Orc only picked Protoss because they're Ember. That's the only <laughs> he picked them. <laughs> I'll tell you they suit his play style, but it's not true. <laughs> ah, right, okay. Um, yeah, it's been absolutely wonderful having you on, Chloe. Thank you very much. No problem, it was nice. Um, would you like to give a shout-out to your sponsors, to your team, anyone uh, in particular? Shout-out to Team Infused, all our sponsors, I can't even remember who they are, and everyone should cheer on Fluid Colour in his show match, because he <laughs> deserves to win one. Oh, wow, you say uh -oh. you oh. Pointing oh, I am hurt. Guy I am so while the, hurt. While the GG manager's on the show, are you there? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm turning my back on this. I'm done. <laughs> well, uh, as I said, thank you very much for coming on. Um, we will be back in a couple of minutes with some news. So, yeah, guys, you should all go and tune in to Moomin whenever you see her play because she is a fantastic player. If you... And welcome back, everybody, to episode number three of Fast Expand. Chris, are you there? I am here, but I'm in a mood after what Moomin said about my GG guy. Well, uh, would you like to spin around and show us your face again? Because uh, this is kind of awkward talking to the back of a head. And ah, uh, I see Mr. you have a Butterbeer. friend with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been inspecting you. <laughs> That's so creepy, man. All you're missing is a, a very fluffy white cat. This will do. It's it's Carlos, or looks kind of like the Muslim, but. <laughs> <laughs> It'll do. Would you like to explain why right you have that in your room? No, not in the slightest. Uh, okay. But I shall anyway. I was bought a hat, but it doesn't fit over my headset. So my parents bought me this white mannequin head for some reason. And I had some leftover makeup stuff from a drama play that I did. So I stuck some eyebrows, sideburns, moustache, and goatee on it. And yeah, it's Carlos. That's now the story my hat of Carlos. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> would you well, like to talk about what has happened in our lovely, wonderful community this week? I would very much like to talk about what's happened in the community this week, and we'll start off with something that me and you cast together: the final WCS qualifier mm -hmm. for the event in London that happened this Sunday. And oh my God! That was, it was pretty intense. It was pretty, pretty close. Yeah, I mean, uh, the last game obviously wasn't close, but the uh, the matches leading up to it was uh, pretty terrifying, really, because obviously there's only two spots and there was how many people competing? Uh, 72, I think, was the number. Yeah, so 72 down to two, team. basically. And uh, I'm sure you're very t happy to know that two GG guys took it. I am so happy to know that. <laughs> I'm just ecstatic. <laughs> Okay, and uh, yeah, so some great um, some great play from them, obviously making it to the 16 players that will be competing down in London very, very soon. So make sure you tune into that. That is the WCS UK qualifiers down in London. Uh, $10,000 prize pool? Am I correct in saying uh, that? Nothing I can announce Okay, yet. okay, okay. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, uh, great things happening uh, that weekend. Obviously, the same weekend was MLG... Uh, Anaheim and there there we got to see Heart of the Swarm now there was a, quite a lot of um, was quite a lot of show matches of Heart of the Swarm quite a lot of information leaked so obviously if you want to kind of check that out uh, you can find Heart of the Swarm information almost anywhere <laughs> uh, what do you kind of make of it so far like what we've seen this weekend um 
as a Protoss, what I make of it is the swarm host is ridiculous. And because the locusts are incredible, they're way too strong to be a continuous stream. Well, they're really but... easy to kill, aren't they? But they shoot up and they've got range. No, 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 no. They're not easy to kill. That's the thing. They do very, very little damage. But oh. they tank a lot of hits. Oh, so they're like, they're like lings, but tanky and don't cost anything. Yeah, basically. They, and they expire. They're like That's sort exactly of halfway like between a ling and a... About halfway between a ling and a broodling with a bit of roach mixed in. That sounds just what the Zag need. <laughs> no, it does not. Not in the slightest. It sounds just terrifying. But speaking of terrifying, on the Protoss side, we have the Tempest. Yeah, 22 it, range. It starts off as, 12, as 10, and then That's from an upgrade from the Fleet Beacon, it gets an extra 12 range. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Well, it's gonna be, it's kind of gonna be used to be a sniper, surely. Like snipe the infestors, snipe the um, vipers, snipe anything in the back, basically. Um, does that is that what Protoss needs? Um, yes, basically, because the Protoss, the biggest issue they have at the moment is breaking stuff like Broodlord infester styles. So. Something that can snipe off Broodlords from range is what Snipe used to be for the Terran until that was nerfed, is great, because Broodlords obviously outrange every, every single ranged unit the Protoss has. So it's really good to have something that can basically shoot from the back so that you actually have a chance to get near enough to that army. Yeah, yeah, I suppose... Yeah. <laughs> but you've also got that cool little oracle unit that flies around and harasses the hell out of anyone, which is really Best cool. idea. Best idea ever. Yeah. The, the fact that it has a close... Before it was cool, because obviously it could, like, trap minerals, and it's the best form of harassment, because the worst form of harassment is you kill the workers, which is obviously a good thing, but you've killed the workers, suddenly they notice, and the worst thing that can possibly happen is they kill off your harassment before you kill enough workers off. Yeah. This thing, because you get a little ping on the map, etc. With this thing, there's no warning. You, If you're looking somewhere else on the map, suddenly you have a base's worth of mining gone. Yeah, and the shield because, lasts and, quite a while, doesn't it? Exactly. And if you're not looking and don't react to it, there is nothing you can do about it because you don't know it's happened. That's what yeah. makes it, in my opinion, like one of the best forms of harassment. So it's basically going to make the pro game a little bit harder because obviously they have to be paying that little bit more attention which is always good is, and the cloak build is going to help a lot <laughs> as well basically um obviously the build we saw i think it was about six months ago um the new build is basically completely changed um and of course heart of the swarm beta to be released soon uh you know as blizzard style soon <laughs> um yeah apparently it's in a few weeks but there's nothing been no. confirmed on that will we see a whole new build yet again do you think what as in when it's released they'll the units will be different again oh no no i'm sure once it's released the units will be different but in the next like couple of weeks when this beta is supposedly coming out are we going to see a almost new game yet again would you say I don't think so. I think they've nailed down some of the big problems that they had with the original units. Like the Obviously, original units the that shredder. they had. The Shredder, <laughs> yes. Incredibly overpowered. I don't know if any of you played the Heart of the Swarm custom map. Oh my god, that was terrifying. The, the Spider Mine, the, not Spider Mine, Widow yeah. Mine, that's what it's called. They can be loaded into it's, a medevac, by the way. It is, Four which I really time. like. So it still can fill the same purpose as the Shredder, which is you could also drop them on mineral lines and it will still latch on. Mm. But it's a really good thing because it's much more balanced. Because if you walk into a Shredder, you're dead. You can't really get out of it in time unless you have a fairly tanky yeah. unit. But you're going to need so much into APM a widow... to dodge those Widow mines, aren't you? Like, it's gonna... Well, you don't dodge the Widow Well, no, you, you separate the they units. They show it. It's the giant red circle. You just walk them away. Yeah, but, I mean, an average, like... For example, it takes... 10 APM to drop four Widow Mines on a mineral line, but it would take about 200 to separate them in time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, but anyway, we, you know, we'll see how Blizzard kind of balance this, and uh, yeah, we could sit here and talk all day about Heart of the Swarm, I'm sure. But uh, let's carry on with the MLG kind of theme. Um, Idra released a statement about MLG and WCS and what it's like to be a player there, and... This sentiment has been mirrored by several other pros and several semi-pros um, as being absolutely atrocious. Like, 
they're not told when their matches are played, their matches are delayed, the scheduling doesn't make sense, they're told to leave unless they're Korean. Um, yeah, there was a thing about this where players were being told to leave unless they were famous enough to really just get in to really be noticed otherwise they were just like you lost okay out you go yeah but even like team managers and you know the people that they need the the team needs for support were being shuffled out of the building because mlg doesn't su uh, supply enough passes i mean if you read idra's little uh, like newest blog on evilgeniuses.net you'll be able to see the kind of position they're put in like he was saying that he only got four to five hours sleep uh, because the scheduling was really weird. He'd end the day at 2 a.m. to come back and play a match at 9 a.m. And then have, you know, he can't leave the building because he doesn't know when the schedule is, so he's forced to sleep at MLG. You know, it's really disturbed sleep. There's two, three hours max. Uh, and basically what it's doing is it's making everyone suffer so no one can play their best. But of course, the Koreans are being treated a little bit differently. They're allowed to stay. They're allowed to kind of go anywhere they want. Uh, they're allowed to, you know, hang around. The coaches are allowed to stick around. They've got the support. I mean, what do they? Do the MLG know it's going on, or is this kind of? Well, they didn't before. Know, like, or they're bound to now because that's yeah. that's like gone right to the top of Team Liquid, basically, and Reddit and where, everything and else, everywhere, basically. But they brought up a really good point. Blizzard have the money to hold a separate event. If you look at almost every other country, if you look at the UK, if you look at Germany, if you look at all the countries, I think the combined European qualifier finals is happening very soon. Basically, they're all separate events. Why do you have to put it in another event? Because that's exactly what's going to happen. You put two events together, people are going to get tired. Well, exactly. And another thing that both In Control and Idra uh, suffered from was when they got knocked out of the WCS, they had to play that MLG like bracket games within 15. Like basically Idra just finished up. The, he was packing his equipment after having lost uh, in the WCS. And then his name got called out to go and play right then. I mean, that's not a good mental state for any player. Never mind, you know, as you said, the Idras who suffer quite a lot from the mental game. But even seasoned pros like In Control, Idra, anyone really that was playing in the WCS who had to lose, pack up their gear, and then go play another match. I mean, that's not good. That's not good for the game. That's not good for them. It's not good for sponsors. I mean, what the hell is going on? I don't know. Well, MLG has been made aware of it, hopefully. They haven't released any kind of statement on it, but as... Well, I can't say as myself as a player because I'm no, I'm nowhere near as that. As a manager, level. then. As a manager, yeah. All we can really do is make sure the message gets across, make sure that it is noticed on these social media forms. If there are addresses at MLG, you need to send it through to them. But all we can really do is hope that they listen. Yeah, I mean, they've got to take note. I mean, the massive amount of. I'm surprised it took this long, to be honest. But the massive amount of community uproar about this has exploded, basically. So. You know, they've got to take notice, and let's hope they do, really. Yeah, pretty um, much. The next point I'd love to bring up was obviously the GSL results from today. Two foreigners playing, uh, sorry, one foreigner playing today, one foreigner playing yesterday. So if you don't want to know the GSL results, if you didn't catch that, or you haven't been on Reddit or Twitter or anything today, please mute the stream just now. But yeah, the foreigner GSL results today, unfortunately, Forzane uh, knocked down to Code A. But he played a really, really good game against Gumiho. Um, he played a really good game against Squirtle as well, but unfortunately Squirtle was just way too good. Like, Squirtle was a boss, basically. He had a very, very hard bracket. It's the same yeah. as that, really. Um, but fortunately, Naniwa, making it through yes. to Code S round of 16, he could be... And pulling a fancy pose while he did it. Yeah, oh, did you see that Reddit? It was amazing. <laughs> I did. That's... But, um... I was watching it live. It was amazing. I was like, yes, Naniwa. Naniwa <laughs> gets a lot of stick. Like, he gets a lot of abuse. Um, and he is the foreign hope right now. He's one of the best players we've got in GSL. He is just... He gets he a lot of abuse. But he's so, he gets a lot so of abuse good. for being BM, basically, which he kind of is. He cares more about the game than anything else, and he's very opinionated about it. He doesn't care about his fans. He doesn't care about... The scene itself. Isn't that what made Idris so popular? Self. 
Not really. Idra, he cares about his fans, etc. But he cares about like his own image kind of thing. Naniwa is literally the definition of doesn't care. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. But um, he's very he, like. That's the reason he did. Sorry, go on. Sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> you go. 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 No, you. Um, <laughs> you hang up first. <laughs> So basically, that's one thing Naniwa did. He just really doesn't care about his fans. If he doesn't think he can win, that's why he got kicked out of GSL before, when he basically just like select all probes, like grab mouse, select all probes, a go go that way, yeah. attack, and then just and just watched. He didn't he didn't care. It didn't matter to him anymore. But yeah. that's he, it's different to Idra who. If he can't win, he six balls. Then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He will try to win, basically, but do a really cheesy build with it. Yeah, and he complains. Right. He complains about everything being Imber, whereas Naniwa complains about people being dicks, kind of thing. So yeah, okay, but anyway, Naniwa, he could win it. Do you expect him to? I don't think he can win the whole thing, but I think he'll get far. Well, he's in the round of sixteen, which is yes probably where everything kind of gets decided if you do really well in the round of 16 then people start to get afraid of you um, yeah. because obviously had... then you're down to the final you know the, uh, the quarterfinals and stuff's getting real then you know people are practicing you know for a solid week against your builds against your style and last time he was in the gsl everyone was rooting for him is it going to be the same story this time or is people kind of gotten a bit too offended by him because he has been uh, he has been speaking out a lot recently i don't think so i think he's still a foreign hope if people want to root for the koreans they'll root for the koreans it's as simple as that but naniwa it's very simply put he's surviving in korea which makes him one of the best foreign players out there at the moment there's Definitely. no dispute about it basically and if he does well, he's still flying the flag. He may not be flying it the way we want, but he's still flying it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I always, like, for example, I don't usually, I'm a Zerg player, so I follow Zerg players in the GSL. Like, if there's not a Zerg player I like playing, I generally miss the GSL unless it's, like, a crazy game. But I've been watching Naniwa, I've been watching Forzane, because at the end of the day, they are the foreign hopes, and I want someone that isn't Korean to win a GSL. <laughs> That would be amazing. It would. It's going to happen one day. One day. One day, I really hope. And I hope it's an English guy as well. <laughs> well, maybe it'll be one of the people from the WCS who no one's even heard of. Yeah. Well, I hope so, anyway. Um, so, just talking about kind of foreigners in the GSL, um, Forzane. Yeah. Um, he got flew in yesterday for his matches today. Yeah. And then he's flying again today to go a dream hack which is tomorrow oh sorry friday hey. no he's flying tomorrow to get to dream hack for this weekend so basically he's flying in playing a match sleeping a few hours flying out sleeping a few hours playing another important tournament what the hell <laughs> you know like... All, like all i can really hope is he's like got been given first class of co uh, no, flights for that so we can sleep on the flight come that's on. the only way they can really get away with that they're kind of not stuff. gonna pay first class flights from america to korea to uh dream hack like it's just it's yeah, not but if if they don't then he's gonna be incredibly well, that's uncomfortable the point. it's I a mean, long bloody way he was really really tired today you could see it in his play you could see it in his concentration levels should i know like obviously foreign players are very very busy they're doing tournaments in america they're doing tournaments in europe and then obviously you know if you're accepted into a gsl code s seed you take it um no matter what um, but should they be cancelling events to really put effort into like the GSL? Should he be cancelling DreamHack so he could fly into the GSL earlier and stay there? Or you know, what's the? Because there has to be give and take, obviously. So you know, what yeah, what can he teams really, possibly do? Like, I think he needs to. If he it would there. Yeah. Eventually, it would be down to his decision whether he entered in those tournaments or not. He would, his team wouldn't have said, right, you're doing this whether you like it or not. EG isn't really like that. The players eventually decide what tournaments they play in, and EG decides whether they can support that. So eventually, it's his choice. The fact that he thought that he could manage that kind of schedule, unfortunately, to say, as much as it sucks, it's kind of his fault. Yeah, I guess so. Um, 
But do you, do you think this could be a reason why foreign players don't really perform well in the GSL? Like, even the ones that are... Well, not the ones that are living out there, obviously, because it makes no difference, but the ones that are being flown in to be flown away again, like, they never feel at home, they're not getting proper rest. Uh, could this I be could, why the foreign players aren't performing? I could definitely be why. As in, not feeling comfortable in your playing environment is obviously going to make you play differently. Yeah. It's why some people suffer from like land pressure, etc. But then again, the same thing could be said the other way. There are a lot of people and players, etc., who being somewhere unfamiliar, doing something you are familiar with, is definite. Like, no matter where you are, you're still playing StarCraft. Yeah, of course. So, it's definitely go It could for some players, it's definitely an adrenaline rush. Yeah. that could really excite them and make them well, play some better. People, so yeah, I was going to say, some people depending. perform better like when they're in a new environment under new pressure. But I can't imagine... Like, I used to travel a lot on planes, and when I got off a plane, the last thing I wanted to do was anything but sleep. <laughs> I didn't want to talk yeah. to anyone. You know, and it's... It's Jet not lag good. Is really yeah. an issue when it comes to StarCraft and anything, really. But, uh, yeah, anyway, hopefully EG find a way to manage this problem, and well, every team finds a way to manage this problem, really, and uh, I hope that foreign players can do well in the GSL. Uh, moving on, Season 8 begins today on European servers, and we have been introduced to a brand new map, Condemned Ridge. Now, have you played on it yet? I have played on it, and I have watched some people playing on it. Cast it by yourself, as it so happens. Yeah, that was an interesting game. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. The map is huge. It is pretty big. I got... I played my placement match on it and I got destroyed by drops basically. I did not know where this guy was coming from. Yeah, um, I I haven't really suffered from that problem yet, uh, but I can see why drop play would be very very good on that map. Especially um, on the, like, the high ground at the first. Yeah, the little kind of cliff do you want to call it a cliff at the back of the first? I suppose it is a cliff, so yeah, I could call it a cliff. But uh, Blizzard originally designed the map with rocks at the third. The community went absolutely nuts, and within four days, those rocks had been removed. So, is this a step in the right direction for Blizzard? Listening to it the definitely community? is a step in the right direction. I think Blizzard definitely need... Blizzard definitely need to be taking in more maps from the community, such as ESV, Team Liquid competitions, etc. Because the community are the ones that play on them. They're yeah. the ones that know it best. Yeah. But the fact that they did listen in that scenario is a very good step for Blizzard. Because obviously they've listened and people are like, if you do this, Zerg aren't going to be able to handle it. Yeah, um, but obviously... the. If you look at the way the leagues are distributed, basically the top 3% or 4% is Masters and above. So there's 96% of people that don't have mechanics and generally blame their losses for imbalances. You know, Obviously the whole 96% doesn't blame the losses for imbalances, but a good portion of that community would say like, for example, they got dropped, drops are imbalanced, they're overpowered. Should Blizzard really be listening to everyone? Or should they be kind of selecting, you know, the pro players from the teams to listen to to get the best opinion on the maps, the units, etc., etc.? That's a tough one because the thing is, the fact that you should really be listening to everyone in this scenario because eventually the people that watch StarCraft are usually the ones that play it, whether it's casually or professionally they're still the ones that watch it. If you put them off by saying, nope, you can't do this because the pro said that this is a better idea, then people are going to be like, no, that's not how it works. Why would I watch something that doesn't cater to everyone? This is a purely pro game now. I can't have fun with this. Well, yeah, I, I kind of agree, but, you know, this is a career for some people. Like, this is a job. And if, you know, you working advertising or whatever, and someone comes along from a completely different background and goes, you're doing this wrong, listen to me. <laughs> you know, or like 10 people come over, for example, and say, no, listen to us, we're more, they're less. Like, there's more of us, less of them. Like, it's kind of a weird balance because you want to treat your community equal, but there's only, you know, a top tier percent that understand 
the absolute core mechanics of a map of a game, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, wh- where do you th- where do you think the balance is? Like, I'm not sure. I suppose this is why maps aren't updated that often, purely because it's such a difficult process going through maps and deciding which ones would be good for tournament play or professional ladder play. It's it's a very hard balance to get, really. Mm. So oh. it's it's ones the map makers like ESV are getting very very good at, and Blizzard are getting better at. But once again, it's who do you really listen to? Which way are they getting better? Who are they getting better for? Yeah, I mean, if you kind of look at season one, like map pool, for example, oh, there was God. some shocking maps in that. Like, so obviously Blizzard has come a long way. It's taken them you know a good part of two years but i think with this new map and listening to the listening to the community about the rocks at the third is a massive step forward and i think everyone should be kind of appreciating that bit of input definitely agree definitely agree with that so sorry do you reckon the next step is to start putting neutral supply depots like the tournaments do in maps or I think that's definitely the next step when it comes to maps, basically. Awesome. To make it, just basically need to listen to the community. Like, all the tournaments do this now. You won't, you'll you rarely come across tournaments that don't have the neutral supply depot. So, why aren't Blizzard doing that? Well, I It's think, obviously working. Yeah, I think Blizzard actually said in a statement that they don't do it because they want to keep it casual friendly. And I think their idea of casual friendly is being able to win a game in four minutes by doing some crazy stuff that would never happen at yeah. a pro level. So, like, they listen to the community about the rocks, but they don't listen to the community about the supply depot, which, in my opinion, would improve the game a hell of a lot. But do yeah. they kind of want to let people get out of bronze by doing the pylon block, get out of silver by doing the bunker block? You know, is like, what do you think? Where do you think their stance is on listening to the community? <laughs> I'm not sure. That's not ready for us to say. No. Um... For one thing. And just quickly before we move on from the news, there is one bit that I've just seen that we missed. Just a quick update for the Heart of the Swarm stuff is the pylon high ground. Oh, yeah. The pylon power does not go up higher grounds now. So you cannot put a pylon at the low ground and warp in up the ramp like you would with a foregate even though foregates have been made pretty much obsolete Uh, but they could still happen if the person was not quick enough to lay down the force field for example and you could warp into the high ground the main issue with it at the moment I'd say would be cannon rushes but it's still a huge deal just like the fact that you can't warp in or place buildings on the high ground that is a complete fundament that is a very useful trick for Plotos Plotos for a Protoss to have, and the fact that you're removing it from them for a problem that's mostly in PvP seems well, a bit unfair. I was going to say, well, to be honest, there were some spots on some maps, but again, that goes back to map design, where, for example, on Antigua, you could wall in a probe using pylons, put a cannon there, yes. and then just run up the ground and cannon up there in the back of their mineral line, making the game end almost instantly because it was an imbalance in the map. Like, you could, there's nothing you could really do about it because of the drone surface area and the timing, etc, etc. So, again, this is kind of catering a bit more to the casual players rather than the pro players, because the pro players could deal with it. They had the APM, yeah. the mechanics, the game knowledge to deal with it. But obviously, an amateur would just go, you know, oh, next game, never mind. And it happens to yeah. the next game, next game, never mind. So, could this be Blizzard kind of making sure that people are happy on the ladder? I think that's what it is, but you're catering to the majority, definitely, because obviously it's going to be... Zergs and Terrans are going to be like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Protosses <laughs> obviously aren't going to be happy about it, well, no. because it's, you're taking something away, but that's the case with all nerfs, etc. So the only really way to deal with that is see how it works. If it doesn't work, you change it back. Well, I mean, look at the difference between the original kind of alpha Heart of the Swarm and the Heart of the Swarm we're seeing now. Uh, you know, they're talking about the four being removed, the mothership being removed. Um, you know, the swarm host had a completely different design. The viper had an extra ability. The overseer was gone. What else? Um, 
There was loads of different stuff. Replicants. Repli oh, God, don't get me started on that <laughs> uh, That was just a bad design idea altogether. Um, it was basically a unit designed to stop a build, which is just silly. It was a unit designed to copy a build. It was a uh, unit no, designed, designed to, to stop the, infest... the 111, wasn't it? Like, cause you yeah, but it's also tank. a unit designed to like do what the Infester can do. It would have made Protoss a lot more fun, basically. Mm. But it's a unit designed... Because Infestors can still do that with a Neural Parasite. It takes ages. Yeah. Um, with a Oracle, you could do it really quickly, but really expensive. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Um, did you actually know Infested Terrans can burrow? I did not. Yeah, I, I found that out today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just while we're talking about Infestors, Infested Terran can burrow. Well, <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I learned that today. I just wanted to share that with you. Our news. Um, yeah, that's absolutely it for this week so far. Obviously, TSL4 going on. If you're in the UK slash Europe, go try and qualify for that. That's really good. And we'll be back with a couple of best of threes. Who's playing today, Chris? We have players from many different teams, including our usual Team GG and Team Fluid players who have appeared on this show a lot. The first match that we will see playing, though, will be from Team Fluid, Fluid Color, and from GG, GG Droller. Awesome. So looking forward to some brilliant games. And uh, yeah, we're back in a couple of minutes. Uh, enjoy some music and some adverts. Please, please, please turn off your ad block. It really helps us out. Um, if you've got a bit of free time during this, uh, during this break, you could always tweet at us. Our Twitters are on screen right now. You could obviously tweet at Fast Expand as well, at Fast Expand. And click the little follow button in the top left. It depends if my camera's mirrored, but top left. And uh, yeah, please enjoy the rest of the show. We'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> 